cortisol's metabolic effects do affect the brain and there it influences appetite and food cravings. And wouldn't you know it, it particularly increases cravings for carbohydrates. Cortisol crosses the blood brain barrier and once again binds to glucocorticoid receptors in the hypothalamus and the amygdala. These are both regions involved in hunger and reward. So people feeling good about what they're doing. Now in the hypothalamus, Cortisol upregulates a protein called NPY, neuropeptide Y, and another one called a GUTI related protein, AGRP. And these are increased in response to the, uh, the, glucocoid, the glucocorticoid response elements. And when they're activated, they stimulate appetite. At the same time, cortisol inhibits leptin signaling, reducing satiety potentially. But separate from that, regulation of appetite in the amygdala cortisol enhances dopamine release so increasing cravings for very palatable energy dense foods now several studies confirm that cortisol specifically increases carbohydrate cravings chow et al in 2017 found that higher baseline cortisol levels predicted increased cravings for carbohydrates and starches over a six-month period but similarly, Lagro et al. in 2019 showed that food cue-induced cortisol increases co correlated with cravings for carbohydrate-rich, highly pal palatable foods. And then in last one, last one, in Cushing's disease, Geiker et al. in 2016 reported that higher cortisol levels were associated with increased cravings for sweet and savory carbohydrate-rich foods which decreased as cortisol was fixed. Uh, that's important. So the people with just straight Cushing's syndrome or Cushing's disease, if they had, when they had high cortisol, they were much more responsive and craving these carbohydrate rich foods. But as the cortisol came down through treatment, so too did the cravings. Now you can sort of compound all of this. So as the cortisol goes high, they're craving more carbohydrate rich foods, which is going to be spiking the glucose even more than the cortisol is already spiking due to its effects at the liver. Even further, as they continue to eat these foods and insulin is spiking all the time, the high insulin alone is capable of driving insulin resistance, but then the cortisol itself is further exacerbating insulin resistance, pushing the insulin up, promoting even more weight gain. So it's a perfect storm metabolically. Now, in summary, as we wrap up, cortisol is in fact a multifaceted hormone that when chronically elevated will profoundly disrupt metabolism. It is promoting gluconeogenesis by activating enzymes like Pepsi-K and glucose 6-phosphatase. That's causing this hyperglycemia. At the same time, it's causing insulin resistance through ceramide biosynthesis and accumulation. The collective effect or the combination of those is what explains the dramatic increase in type 2 diabetes when cortisol is chronically elevated. Underlying all of this are these pathogenic changes in how the body stores fat with a much greater or a promoting environment of storing fat in the visceral and central adipose tissue at the expense of the healthy fat storage in the subcutaneous space. But as much as cortisol does have an effect on fat storage, absolutely it does, it still is not sufficient to act without insulin. Insulin still reigns supreme as, for example, reflected in the untreated type 1 diabetic where cortisol is elevated, insulin is absent, and no amount of eating can make that body store any degree of fat. And then lastly, cortisol has a central effect promoting not only appetite and hunger, but specifically increasing a craving for carbohydrate-rich foods. Not a lot of good. Now, lest it sound like I have painted cortisol as a uniform villain, it is a hormone that is essential. The absence of cortisol will, in short order, lead to an absence of life. It is lethal. We need its ability to help the body mobilize energy. In its absence, there's insufficient energy going into the blood in instances of, say, fasting, and the body isn't going to last too long. 
Thanks for joining me in this exploration of cortisol's myriad metabolic effects. I hope that you feel like you've learned something new and valuable. After all, more knowledge, better health.